evidence glorious forgiving we love you Lord be magnified forevermore in Jesus name we have given thanks hallelujah are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord this morning if you're happy to be here go to seven people and say happy Easter to you the Lord bless you this year this Easter will not be your last I'll see you again next year we will be alive to celebrate the goodness of God hallelujah You know, only four. God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. We started a journey with God on these years. Fasting, Easter fasting and prayer retreat day before yesterday. We were in the presence of the Lord in this sanctuary on Friday. We were here yesterday seeking the face of God, interceding for our nation, interceding for this assembly and praying for you. Praying for ourselves as well. And our theme was and is still Redeemer. Day before yesterday, we looked at the concept of redemption, especially the redemption that Jesus Christ brought for us and to us as mankind. Then we looked at our places. In the redemption that Jesus brought through his suffering, torture, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. We looked at the benefits of his death and resurrection for us as men when I say men I mean human beings and that of course placed before us a demand or an appeal which I still want to reinforce in the midst of God's people today for the advantage of those who are following us online and those who weren't in church on Friday and Saturday that if anyone is in the world who has not met with the Lord that person is towing the path of another peril the prime message of this season is that each one must run to the cross for there is no effort, there is no righteousness, there is no religiosity, there is no commitment, there is no generosity, there is no devotion that you give to God that can replace the blood that Jesus brought to settle our cases once and for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What are you going to use to replace this sacred blood that was shed on the cross for you? All these Easter activities will be reduced to frivolities if salvation is taken out of it all. If redemption, the concept of redemption is taken out of it all, 
if in the midst of our celebrations, the understanding of redemption is not there, then we are celebrating in vain. So I like, as a matter of preambles, challenge everyone here. You are not born again. You have not given your life to Christ. You have not come to the cross for your sins to be forgiven. You have not run to the Lord for the salvation of your soul. Who else can redeem you? Who else can save you? And if you are claiming I have come to the cross, I'm born again, I've given my life to Christ. Why are you nailing him again? Why are you not grateful to the one who has been so faithful to you? Look at what he did for you. In Isaiah chapter 53, which has been our focus, our text, main text for this year's fasting and prayer of Easter period retreat. Isaiah 53, the Bible says from verse 3, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God. <clears throat> smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. That's just to mention some of the sacrifices that Jesus made for us. And going to our text for today's program, 1 Peter chapter 3. Verses 18 through 21. I like all of us to open to that place because we are going to read corporately. That is to point our attention to some other things which he did for us through his blood and his resurrection. First Peter chapter 3 from verse 18. Everybody, let's go. For Christ died. For sins, once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. To bring you to glory. He was put to death in the body. But made alive by the spirit. Through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently. In the days of Noah. While the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. Verse 21. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the remover of death from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and pass in submission to him shout hallelujah and Jesus did not just go to heaven and sit down at the right hand of the father enjoying the submission of the powers of darkness, of authorities of angels, of of, of, of powers. No, Jesus did not just sit down there. Jesus went there thinking about us as well. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter 14. And you are going to see something beautiful that should amaze you and make you come closer to him every day. Living for him every moment. John chapter 14 from verse 1 down to verse 4. John 14, the gospel of Jesus, according to St. John chapter 14, 1 through 4. Everyone, let's read that place as well. Let's go. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. 
in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so i will have told you i am going there to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where i am you know the way to the place where i am going what else do you want he came he suffered the righteous for the unrighteous he did not suffer for us as righteous people we were guilty of iniquities in fact death was fear to us we merited death we deserved death because we were unrighteous but he brought his righteousness to birth for us righteousness and he put it in us the garment of righteousness and aside that after his death he resurrected to heaven and he went there to prepare a place for us building mansions for us making rooms for us giving us our locations and locations in the kingdom of his father and he also said after i am i might have completed this I will not just sit down there and be enjoying myself, the glory of my kingdom. I will still come back so that I will take you to the place that I have prepared for you. You will not go there to struggle any longer. In heaven, in eternity with God, there are no labors there. No struggles, no ozzles. Because the master, the redeemer had gone there to prepare a place for us and he said after preparing that place for us he will come and have us and that was where we concluded yesterday when we were looking at the attributes of the redeemer and one of the attributes of the redeemer is that the redeemer is coming back this risen christ is coming back to have me this reason Christ is coming back to have you. He's coming back to take you and I. Those who have confessed him as their Lord and Savior. Those who are living by grace. Not by power. Not by their human righteousness. Those who are living by grace. Those who are living by faith. Who are not living by sight. Those who have confessed him. Those who are living by him. Those who are living for him. Those who are living with him is coming to take them to the place that he had prepared for them put your hands together for him i don't know why you are clapping like this in church and why what are we expected to do having looked at all these that redeemer has done for us Having looked at the amazing commitment, the amazing sacrifice, the supreme sacrifice he paid for us, the amazing provision that he has made for you and I, those of us who have believed in him. It doesn't matter whether you are black, it doesn't matter whether you are white, it doesn't matter whether you have blue eyes or you have dark eyes or you have brown eyes, it doesn't matter whether you are educated or you are an illiterate. It doesn't matter whether you are tall or you are short. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or you are poor. It doesn't matter whether you have a vehicle or you don't have. It doesn't matter whether you are healthy or you are not. It doesn't matter whether you have human connection or you don't have human connection. It doesn't matter your tribe. He has made provision for all. Having seen all this, what should be our response to this amazing and great sacrifice? This great provision that he has made for us. Psalm 103. And from there we looked at there were three or four attributes of the Redeemer. But we are, not, we are just going to look at the number one verse there. Verse one of Psalm 103 and I'm going to round off. Psalm 103. All of us we read that Psalm 103 verse 1. And you read it aloud. Let's go now. Praise the Lord. Oh my soul. 
and all my inmost being praise his holy name let's read verse 2 as well let's go praise the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits that's okay two things praise the lord that should be your number one response to this sacrifice that he made for you live a life of thanksgiving every day to god i don't know what you're having inside your envelope i don't know the amount you have brought before the lord for your easter thanksgiving or as your easter thanksgiving offering but may i tell you that it doesn't matter how much you have in that envelope it is not the amount you put there that matters it is your heart of gratitude your attitude of gratitude all the time not just today your praise to god must go beyond being momentary your thanksgiving to god must go beyond being spontaneous alone it must be a lifestyle you must live to thank him each time you remember that jesus has paid for everything that was a song we were taught in our primary stroke secondary school days when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah 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 when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah when i remember his promises i shout when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah 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 when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah 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 when i remember his promises i shout hallelujah praise the lord oh my soul please sit down every day you must live a life of thanksgiving to the one who saves a wretched sinner you are you were not an ordinary sinner you were not an ordinary sinner in fact you were a criminal i was a criminal we were all guilty before god by birth naturally but the one who loves us came for us declared us discharged and acquitted you saw our jaguda dealt with the debtor But when the king of kings stepped in, the culprit was able to rise up and go with confidence to declare our freedom before Jaguda. That's what happens. That's what Jesus did for us. And number two thing. aside giving praise and thanks to him all the time the psalmist says forget not all his benefits i don't intend to spend more than two more minutes here in this church but i like to let you go with this the number two thing that the redeemer is expecting from you and i is that when we are enjoying life when things are rosy for us when things are working for us don't forget that you are meant to live for the redeemer don't forget that you are meant created spared protected fortified 
to live a life of thanksgiving to the, the redeemer forget not everything he has done for you when things are working well forget not what he has done for you when things are not working well when challenges come when troubles come forget not all the benefits that you have received from him that you are receiving from him above all forget not the prime benefits that he has given you the benefit of the salvation of your soul that has come to you free of charge bow before the lord and say lord i'm grateful this morning for this privilege to be part of those who have been redeemed by the blood redeemer i celebrate you could you rise on your feet and lift your hands and sing your song of praise to the redeemer please put aside your cell phone now lift your hands to the lord all the instrumentalists all the choristers everyone outside including those who are in the control room lift your hands to the lord rise on your feet lift your hands to god wave those hands to the lord and open your mouth to sing a song of thanksgiving to him for what he has done for you the psalmist says in psalm 103 verse 1 praise the lord oh my soul one of the ways to show praise is to sing songs so i like you to open your mouth and sing a song of thanksgiving to god wave your hand if you have been privileged to have two hands please lift up those hands above your head wave those hands to the lord and sing your song of thanksgiving and say lord i am grateful i am thankful before you today i am thankful i am thankful i am grateful glory to your name thanks be to you thank you for all you have done for me say something beautiful to god say lord i thank you thank you for this supreme sacrifice thank you for saving my soul thank you for redeeming me thank you for accepting me as i am thank you lord jesus for making a room for me with you thank you for every provision that you have made for me thank you for your intervention all the time thank you for forgiving my sins thank you for showing me your love i lift you up oh god thank you mighty god be exalted, O oh Lord our God. In Jesus' glorious name, we have given thanks. We have come today, O oh Lord, our Redeemer, to round off this Easter fasting and prayer with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us that has made you to do all for us. Glory be to you. Help us, O oh Lord, to perpetually live a life of thanksgiving. Help us, O oh Lord, not to forget, forget all the benefits that you have given to us through your resurrection. Help us to keep living for you, working with you, working for you, cooperating with you, and cause, O oh God, your glory to continue to be seen upon our lives that this year's easter celebration will not be our last in jesus name we have prayed amen